welcome back to the most magical podcast on the internet. We are so excited because not only are we celebrating something special, but the special thing that we are celebrating is us, the actual Why We Disney podcast and the team. We have a birthday celebration coming for you guys today. So stay tuned for all of the magic. You're going to hear it all from us today. Let's get started. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Why We Disney podcast. My name is Casey, and as always, I have my co-host Kara with me. Hey. (laughs) Guys, if you have been listening from the beginning, whether you are a longtime listener or a brand new listener, we just want to first off say thank you. Thank you so much for your love and support. Kara and I literally could not do this without you. So thank you so much. We like... If we could give away like our left arm to all of our listeners who have been listening from the beginning, literally we would. Thank you guys. Seriously. We want to celebrate on today's episode, Kara, one year, one full year of releasing episodes. One year, 51 episodes. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I want to celebrate in a really cool way. You guys have been listening to us, obviously, for a really long time. And we normally ask our guests this, like, why do they Disney? Well, you might have not heard Kara and Casey's maybe first time telling you guys why we Disney, why we do this, why we get on here every week and just spill our hearts out about how much we love Disney and even like unpopular opinions, things that Disney does that we don't really love, like, it puts it's a lot of work and we put it here just for you guys. So I think we're just going to go ahead and jump into maybe why we Disney and why we started this thing. I will say, Kara, before I move on, I'm so sorry, I forgot about this. So today I was feeling nostalgic, right? And I listened to the very first episode of the Why We Disney podcast. And it like, I think it's such a great episode. And like, even to this day, Kara, isn't it one of our most like listened episodes? It is. It is. Uh, I think like between the listening platforms, this is not including YouTube, but it has like over 200 plays. Um, And for us, like a a smaller podcast, it's just, it's so nice. It is our most listened. So thanks guys. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Kara, maybe if you get time sometime this week, you should listen to the very first episode. And just, I was all in my feels. Like it was such a great episode and it was our very first one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I literally remember we probably recorded that in August of um, 2020 because we prepped all these episodes before we even launched. And so just thinking back on that, like it's been over a year since we've been working on this and now we're here. So it's like hmm, crazy. And now we're here. I can't wait. Well, so let's talk about why we Disney Kara. Do you want to go first? Oh, sure. Um, uh, why we Disney. So our birthday, this is a uh, launch day. So if you're watching this episode, the day it releases today is November 10th, 2021. And our official birthday is November 11th, 2021. So, um, I think this podcast really just shows why I love Disney, the opportunity to create magic with so many different people and explore so many different adventures with people. I met Casey on Instagram and we, you know, loved each other's magic. And we were like, let's start a podcast. And here we are a year later. Um, And I think my, my purpose of loving Disney, even a year ago to now, if we look at the enchantments song, you are the magic. And just like thinking about that and what that can do for you and your family and just remind yourself that through trials and tribulations, like you can still have this magic in you, or you can just go to the Disney park and get that magic yourself. So, um, I'm just so appreciative of Disney for bringing that to me and kind of bringing me out of this like dark despair that I am sometimes and showing me the light and the magic. And I just, I love Disney movies and parks and anything that is happiness specifically yeah. happily ever after, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Um, so Kara, I really do like want to pull out one thing that you said. I, li- I Like I said, I listened to the very first episode of the Why We Disney podcast and you talked about how like you, you were just open and vulnerable and you were like, I struggle with anxiety sometimes. And when I went to the Disney parks for the first time as an adult, like somehow it all just like dwindled away. 
It does. It all disappears. Even when we are, we talk about this all the time when they're on, when we're recording the podcast, everything else is kind of like, we forget about it during that, you know, 45 minutes that we're recording. So when I'm sitting down to watch a movie or specifically when I'm in the parks, it's like you are in this world of fantasy and you are just a part of the magic. And I love that opportunity to escape still realizing that the real world is there. And I get that, but, um, I just love being there. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I, I think about this meme all the time and I know you've seen this meme Kara, but it's like (laughs) spending like an extra $2 on like upgrading your like Chick-fil-A meal or your Starbucks drink. It's like, Oh no, like, I don't know. But then like at Disney, it's like all of the money just like, (laughs) Oh, I said that last episode about Disney Springs. It's like, all of a sudden I have no budget. I completely forget. But at home you go to the mall and you're like, Oh gosh, like I just don't know, like if I can make this work, but at Disney, it just doesn't exist. I can validate any of the 50th merchandise, but I can't validate like a new sweater. (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> for like your everyday life yes. it's fine I have no problems it's so funny but that's what that's like that's what the magic is to me it's just this community of pure happiness and people all relating to each other and being able to adventure with one another so it just that's why I Disney and in in return why I podcast yeah so what about you yeah so uh, why I Disney it's There's just so many words and I'm going to try to sum it up really, like really short, hopefully, but Disney is so much than just the parks, right? It's the movies and it's the franchises that they've partnered with. And, um, our, um, I guess she, Laurel, she's a team member that we have on the why we Disney podcast. She explains it like so perfectly why she Disney's is like Disney taught me so much about growing up. And so much about friendship and about being an adult and like you have a lot of responsibility and you have a lot of dreams and chase those dreams. If you like, if you're willing to work hard, chase those dreams and make it happen. And so many Disney movies have taught me so much just about life and friendship and relationship. And now that I'm married, like I'm putting into play, like things that I've learned from the past, like into my marriage and treating Daniel like like he wants to be treated and sacrifice. Like how many Disney movies have taught us about sacrifice? Like so many, and you just do that so much in marriage. So I, why, why I Disney is a lot all in one, but I want to give just a quick story. And I don't think I gave this story when we first started, but why I jumped into this Disney pool, like head first. But so I actually went to Disney several years ago with it was six of us, five of my friends and myself. And we went to Disney just for like a short weekend. And I'm going to like I'm going to openly say this, but I didn't love it, which is like shocking. Like, what do you mean? Like, you didn't love it. But like, I think it was just a really short trip. And we were up from like the crack of dawn to like midnight every single night. And I spent a ton of money and my feet hurt. Like I wore the wrong shoes and it just wasn't like a great experience. And I remember coming back telling my husband, like, it was great. Like I had fun, but I don't know if I could see myself like doing that again. But a few months later, I went back with a smaller group of girls and we were there for a few more days longer than the original trip. And I had the best time. We talk about how like that stuff in the outside world, it just kind of, it goes away for a minute, you know? Yeah. And we're yeah. able to just like live as a kid and have fun and live in the magic. And I just think Disney does such a great job of really just taking you out of your life life and putting you in this like really cool world where you can do anything. Um, but anyway, so then I ended up, on that second trip, getting my annual pass and going with my family a few months later. And it has just been, it's like a ball rolling down a hill. Like it just doesn't stop. And now that I'm here, Kara and I have been doing this podcast for a year and we've loved every second of it. Like no regrets. Like Kara, I know that you can honestly say like no regrets. Nope. We've done it all the best that we could. And and here we are. So that's why I Disney. That's a lot of words, but I, I feel like it represents why I Disney. Mm -hmm. And I also want to mention, um, adding into mine, just because I am about this like community of culture, but specifically when it's focused around family, 
I'm, I'm a huge family person. Um, and sometimes even the Disney community forgets, but especially people who think Disney adults are weird, um, forget that the actual purpose of Disneyland, the first Disney park was created for a place for parents to take their kids. And so it is literally built for adults. And I just love this notion of, you know, the whole family being able to experience the magic together and it not being for us. Because when you think theme parks, you think, you know, teens or whatever, but you don't think family. And I think Disney's that first place all the way back um, that created that family atmosphere. So I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's literally for adults. I just need to break that down. <laughs> we have to get t-shirts made. Disney parks is literally for adults. Yes, it is. That's going to be a, a merchandise. <laughs> well, let's um, talk about how much we've grown, Kara. Like, God, from day one to now. Like, what's? let's talk about it. So I thought about this segment that we're about to do, and I need to give credit where credit is due. I watch a lot of YouTubers um, and their content creators. So this is coming from Katie Steckley. She did like an anniversary video of her YouTube and she was, you know, saying, you know, then versus now, which I really thought that we could do for the podcast. And when Casey and I first started, we didn't have an editor. We just kind of came on and talked and then tried to figure out how to get it on Apple podcasts and Spotify. And there was no, um, social media. The first one we had was a Facebook group. We didn't even have Instagram yet, but looking from then to now, as of November, 2021, we have 2014 Instagram followers, which if you do the math is over a hundred a month. So yeah. Wow. Um, we have 281 YouTube subscribers. Thank you. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that button. If you're listening here on YouTube and Casey, get this, we have 5,303 total listens across 50 episodes, which is averaging, averaging 106 listens per episode. Yeah. There, there are no words. Like I, that's, shocking when you look at the numbers mm-hmm. and to think like in the beginning, how we just like jumped on and press record and you were like, are you ready? And I'm like, no. And you're like, I'm like, are you ready? And you're like, Oh, I'm ready as I'm going to be okay. Record. And like now to just hear those numbers, it's just surreal. And if anyone knows me, I am all about podcast analytics <laughs> and my own Instagram. I'm kind of just breaking things down and it's life is a numbers game. Um, unfortunately, but you know, you got to look at these things as a reflection. And when I look at it at first, I'm like, Hmm, 5,000 listens doesn't seem like a lot, but it's, it's again, that meme of, but if Casey and I went up on stage and talked in front of 5,000 people, like that stadium would be amazing. So if you think of it that way, um, I don't know. I just really appreciate every single listen. You guys have no idea. We're throwing the numbers out there. Every single subscriber, follower, listen truly means so much to us. Um, not only do we love telling our story, but your listen, your follow, your swipe on Instagram, it helps us grow. Yeah. So we really appreciate all of your interactions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> so we should probably talk about where we want to be. <laughs> um, 2022. Um, and this is where our followers, our listeners, this is where you guys come in right? So we have some goals that we would love to hit. And we're going to play this back in a year. And hopefully we hit these goals, um, kind of targets for us. So we would love to have a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I feel like that's kind of like a a big hill that we're going to climb, but I believe that we can get there. I believe it. Yes. I truthfully believe it. We would love to have 5,000 followers on Instagram. And I hate using the word followers. We really should say community members because this is the Disney community. So many of us are here to share the magic. So that's why we're on Instagram, not for you to follow us, but we're here telling our story and, and putting our episodes out there for you guys to learn these tips and tricks. You guys love our guide and walk through episodes. So just to kind of get that information, we'd love for more of you to join along in the journey. And the total listens, 
Again, we're at 5,300 right now, but that number is completely up to you guys. Um, that's up to our audience. Spread the word, help others find the most magical podcast on the internet. You know, go ahead and post it, share it, have your grandma listen to it, tell your dogs and stuffed animals to listen to it. It doesn't matter. This is magic for everyone, you know, young, old, anyone in between. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Have it on, have it just on in the background. <laughs> that's fine well, too. You know, that's what some people do. Like they're just folding their laundry and listening to the podcast episode, or you're going on a run and listening. So yeah, there's no time anywhere you go. For sure. For sure. All right. Are we moving on? Of course. I don't want to move on from that. Like it's just, <laughs> it's so cool to talk about. It really is. It really is. Well, guys, like what, um, Kara, what do we want to see within the next year? Because obviously in another year on November 10th, 2022, we'll be celebrating another year of the podcast, hopefully. So where do we want to be when that comes around? Like, what are some things that we want to see in the second year of the podcast? So I, I mean, you just did a lot of talking. Do you want to start with me? Yeah, go first. Okay. So mine is more of like a really fun one, something that I, it was my vision, like from the beginning when Kara and I first started, I really wanted to go to Disney with Kara. And to this day, I've never been to Disney with Kara. And so one of the, we've, our team has grown, obviously there's, there's five of us now, right? Yep. There's five of us. And I just, this is my dream goal for the second year of the podcast is that we would all go to Disney together as a team and just enjoy that and embrace that together. I think it would just bring us closer. I, absolutely. Uh, we've talked in a previous episode about doing Disney each other's ways. Yes. Um, and closing down the parks like Casey does and rope dropping at 2 a.m. like I do. So yeah. uh, I would just love to experience Disney through the eyes of, you know, uh, Samantha and Haley and Laurel, some of our other team members yeah. as well. For sure. So that's mine. What's yours? Oh, you know, I grew up in the age of BuzzFeed, which means I've been a Try Guys fan since before they were their own LLC and Second Try. And I, again, I'm a huge YouTuber. I do not watch that many TV shows because I'm constantly watching YouTube. Um, <laughs> that being said, one of the first things people have is merchandise. And we actually talked about this in our last episode when we were talking about the shirt um, that said there's always room for churros. Yes. I would just love to see some Why We Disney merch out there. Um, I love when people are tagging things of small shops and saying it made its way to Italy or it's all around the world. And again, it's all about that community uh, vibe, just kind of seeing people from everywhere be a part of this, which is like awesome. Yeah. Well, it makes me think to the, um, the Starbucks drink that we came out with the why we Disney podcast Starbucks drink, like mm -hmm. people who like, we didn't even know were trying that drink and tagging us from like all over from like Disneyland to Florida. Like it was just insane. And I would just love it if like someone like would wear our merchandise and like in the parks and tag us. Like, I just think it'd be the coolest thing. Yeah, I would like fangirl over my own merchandise. I'm really going <laughs> up. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, guys, um, we actually have a fun game for you. We've talked a lot about statistics. We've talked about our why, but like, I want to know how you do Disney in a perfect day. So we have game time coming soon. Up first is an ad break, so we'll be right back. All right, guys, it is game time. And I am so excited for Kara to explain what we're about to do. This was so fun to create. And I cannot wait to see your creations because guess what? We can't do a game and not allow you guys to not do it with us. Come on. All yes. right, Kara, go ahead and explain. What are we doing? Okay. Um, we're going to call this the perfect Disney day game. <laughs> um, it I was fun to create. It was also a little stressful. I don't know yes. about you. Um, and I created it. So here's the game. If you want to play along, you have a full day. It's like the parks are to yourself. Okay. Money's not an issue. So don't, don't worry about the price tag. You can get any dining reservation you want and you have to use two lightning lanes. 
So what are those like top two rides that you're really going to do? And we have all these different times from the moment you wake up until the last thing that you do. So do you want, do you want me to do mine first or do you want to go? Uh, you go first. <laughs> okay. Well, on my perfect Disney day, we're going to be running around a lot. Yes. We are going to wake up at the Riviera Resort. Have I stayed there yet? No. Do I know I'm going to love it? Yes, because I've actually been to the resort um, and I just love its bougie And I know that I will glass. I mean, I'll just, I'll just love all the glamour of it. So we're going to wake up there. We're going to stay there for breakfast at Topolino's and I'm going to get my um, Mickey waffles and my mini waffles. It's the only place on property you can get those mini waffles. So we're going to do that. Um, another reason I picked the Riviera is because of the Skyliner. Love that thing. It's its own ride. We're going to take the Skyliner over to Hollywood Studios and use our first lightning lane at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Honestly, this one was hard to choose because I was like, Rise of the Resistance, Tower of Terror, eh. But I was like, it's my one day at Disney. I better go on a Mickey Mouse ride. <laughs> so, you know, that was the choosing there. Then we're going to take the Skyliner again over to Epcot. You know, Epcot girl here. Got to get to Epcot eventually. Um, and we're just going to eat around the whole world showcase. Early lunch. We're just going to, you know, bask in all of our uh, journeys and take in the celebrating of different cultures. So I might have a cannoli in Italy, a martini. <laughs> <laughs> I might have some bratwurst in Germany. But honestly, it's like I'm traveling the world all in one day. So perfect yeah after that we're going to take the bus right over to magic kingdom because you can't have a perfect day without magic kingdom duh. you can't it's impossible <laughs> so right after lunch i'll probably grab some joffrey's i'll get the mission to s'mores and i'll drink that mission to s'mores while i'm watching the carousel of progress mm -hmm. man brandon has done this before when i'm in a really bad mood i mean like if i'm crying because life is hard just put on the song it's a great big beautiful tomorrow and i will start laughing hysterically clears it right up i'm yeah. perfectly fine after that <laughs> um after that, you know, for our two o'clock lightning lane, we're going to go on Space Mountain. It is my favorite mountain. And of course, I'm going to spend most of my afternoon shopping and just taking in the sights of Main Street USA. Honestly, just people watching, watching the cavalcades, spending all of my money at the Emporium. <laughs> We're going to eat dinner at Be Our Guest, and then I'm going to end the night with that fireworks show. Um, I would prefer Happily Ever After, but we're, we're going to watch Enchantment, I guess. We're, I still have to give it a try in person. So yeah. that would be my perfect day if crowds and money didn't exist. Oh, that truly sounds like the most perfect day. Seriously. I would so love to do that day. It's hard to make. It's hard to pick. I will say um, at dinner at Be Our Guest, are, is the Beast walking through the restaurant now? Do we know? He's walking through dinner and lunch the last and time I was there. Very cool. Okay, then yes, I would appreciate a Be Our Guest lunch or dinner. That would be really cool. Mm -hmm. But that what about you? We've got to hear your perfect day. Uh, my perfect day contains a lot of Joffreys. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into my perfect day. So where am I waking up? I'm waking up at the Polynesian Resort. Never stayed there, but it is a dream resort for me. I would love to stay at the Poly. Um, truly amazing. Okay, so moving down to our next time slot. I am sleeping in at the Poly. Just FYI, I'm not waking up super early. I'm sleeping in and enjoying that resort uh, to its full potential. So this is my perfect day. It might not be your perfect day, but this is mine. All right, so I'm sleeping in for sure. Then I'm heading over to Magic Kingdom, hopping the monorail, right, and heading right over to Magic Kingdom. I'm having my Nutella waffle at Sleepy Hollow. If you've never had that Nutella waffle for breakfast, life changing. I make it at home. Like, it's so good. Okay. I feel like people split. It's either like you go left on the castle and get the Sleepy Hollow Nutella or you go right. I get the Gaston's um, cinnamon roll. Cinnamon roll. Exactly. Yep. It's one of those two, right? Every time we go to magic. All right. So after I have breakfast, I'm going to do my first lightning lane, which is either going to be pirates or space mountain. 
I'm going to get a Joffrey's after I ride my ride, probably after I ride space because I'm already over there in Tomorrowland. Mission to S'mores Latte iced with no toppings, no whipped cream, none of this stuff on top. I know. Kara's like, what? Wait. <laughs> I don't know. It, a part of me, it's like, well, it's extra calories, but I really just love the Mission to S'mores coffee itself. So I'm like, don't put any of that stuff on there. Just give me, just give me more coffee. So yeah, there's that. Uh, all right. And about this time, it's around lunchtime and I don't normally eat lunch right at 12 or one o'clock. I eat like a later lunch at Disney. So I'm riding Little Mermaid. I'm definitely riding Big Thunder, probably Space again or probably Pirates again. Then what we're doing around two o'clock is we're park hopping over to Epcot. OK, Kara is our Epcot girl, but I will say the evenings in Epcot are my favorite my restaurant that I decided to eat at reservation is in Epcot and it's Garden Grill. This is the restaurant that it's at the land, right? The land. The land. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And it spins around and this is a meet and greet restaurant. So it's um, it's Mickey, Chip and Dale, Pluto, Mickey, Chip and Dale and Pluto. Adorable. Great food. This is where I'm eating for lunch that day, a late lunch. And then I'm going to head over to Frozen Ever After, and I'm going to ride this twice because to Kara's rules, the park's open just for me that day. So crowds aren't an issue. Money's not an issue. I'm riding Frozen Ever After twice. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about today? How are you feeling about my perfect day? I, I have to wait till the end and then I'll well, say. <laughs> all right. Well, after I ride Frozen Ever After twice, if not three times, because I seriously love it that much, I'm going to go meet Elsa and Anna. I love their meet and greet. And then I'm going to go get another Joffrey's, probably in America. I'm going to go get my shaken Jamaican cold brew with mocha and cream, sip on that and walk around. And now it's dinner time. Yeah. I would love to eat at Space 220, along with everyone else who is dying to eat there. But seriously, that is going to be, I from my, the videos I've seen and the reviews I've seen, it's going to be a phenomenal restaurant. That's where I want to eat is, dinner at Space 220, and then I will hop back over to Magic Kingdom, and I will end the night with Enchantment, and then another Joffrey's right before the fireworks. This is my all-time perfect day, and I'm probably closing down the parks after that as well. So after the fireworks go down, I'm still going to be in Magic till at least midnight. Well, yeah, That's Casey's it. sitting at Casey's Corner at those tables, yes. just taking it in. Uh, with my belly full. Uh, it just sounds like such a great day. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, I have to say for our loyal listeners, you're probably thinking because after looking at mine and listening to Casey's, I'm like, wow, mine is missing. You're probably thinking, Kara, how did you make a perfect day without mentioning tachos? You're right. I know. <laughs> Um, but when it comes to tachos and le the whole world showcase, you know, take them you where you can. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And I feel like Casey is our resident Hollywood Studios girl and you didn't go. Didn't go. Hollywood has been so packed lately. It's just, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. This is my perfect day. I don't know. If I had two perfect days, obviously I would hit up Animal Kingdom and Hollywood the next day. But you only gave me one. Awesome. And so it's all good. But I mean, this was super fun for Casey and I to put together. But what's even more fun is we want to see all of your responses. So you can go to our Instagram. There's going to be a story template. Go ahead and fill out all your time slots and then tag us. We want to see your perfect days. I would love to know what you think about ours. Did we miss something? I'm sorry about the tachos. <laughs> um, or maybe you're basing something off of a resort or maybe you want to do all four parks in one day. Let us know your perfect park day. Really, really fun. And guys, don't forget, we are on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. Make sure that you subscribe to our newsletter that goes out every single month. Like I said, follow us on Instagram, like our Facebook group. Please stay in contact with us because we're releasing a lot of episodes and a lot of things all at one time. Make sure you're keeping up with the Why We Disney podcast and wish us a happy birthday. This is our birthday week, so celebrate with us. We love you guys so much and we hope that you have an awesome Wednesday and the rest of your week. We'll see you soon. Bye.